Good morning. Welcome to Life for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're joining us this morning. We're back in a more familiar setting, my office. Uh, if you walk through church, you probably don't see this view of my office because uh, that way is the window. When you're coming in from the front door, you end up seeing the window and other things that are over there. But you don't often see the bookshelf that's tucked just around the corner when you come into my office. Um, so, we're back into it, which is, which is wonderful, and I, I think we have a wonderful little gem for our devotional time this morning. Uh, I encourage you to explore the YouVersion Bible app before we uh, get into our verse of the day. There's a lot of different things in there. You can add prayer lists. Uh, you can see what other people are praying for, and, and much like on on Facebook or Instagram or other social media websites, you can give like a thumbs up or a like or a heart or something like that. On uh, the YouVersion Bible app, if you see that someone is praying over something and they make that prayer public to this forum, you can put praying hands there that say, I prayed for it. I lifted it up. Uh, you know, something that I've, I've you hear Christians say is, would you pray for this? Absolutely, I'll, I'll be praying for that. But do we actually pray for it? And this is a, a way to just kind of keep track of those things. Uh, you could, add, If someone asks you to pray for something, you can add it to your prayer list. Or if you see that they're praying for it, you can easily uh, hop on there and hit, yes, I prayed for that today, um, praying now. It, it's really kind of neat that they've created this community on there. Uh, with that, let us make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out that YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day is Psalm 85, verse 2. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. Selah. Wow. There, there's a few things going on here that we want to talk about. Uh, first is the words for iniquity and sin are different. Uh, they, they often mean something similar, but there's, there's something being evoked by the author of the psalm using two different words. Sometimes you'll even get the word transgression thrown in there. And, you know, when you hear the word iniquity, what, what does it bring about in your mind? Does it bring out something different from sin? Does transgression do something different? So here the psalmist writes, right at the beginning of the psalm, you forgave the shortcomings of your people, but not only that, Yahweh, not only that, God, you covered it. So forgiving sin just lets it sit where it is. But it still stinks. Covering it covers the smell as well. And there's this beautiful imagery being evoked here. God doesn't just forgive sin by dismissing sin. He covers it in order to atone for it. And later, then, God the Son would atone for the world's sin in the same way by covering it with his blood. There's a lot to be said right now for, in the Old Testament, in order for your sin to be forgiven, at the times of sacrifice, the blood of the sacrifice would be thrown on you to cover you. And that's how you knew the sin would be for, forgiven. In the New Testament, you're covered in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, who takes away the sin of the world. You're covered in baptism and communion and in the absol confession and absolution, which is then brings us to that unique word that closes this little short reading, Selah. This Hebrew word is kind of hard to translate. We've mentioned this before. It's either a, a chorus break, because the Psalms were often used in worship, much like uh, a hymnal. This was their hymnal, 
And so it was this evoking of this whole process of having your sins forgiven and worshiping and praising God. So maybe it's a pause in worship for you to praise God, or maybe it's very similar to our order of service. We begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What do we do right after that? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us, coming from 1 John chapter 1. But... If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then what shows up? Kneel or stand. What's the prompt? A time of silence for reflection on God's word and for self-examination. Could it be? This is just musing. This is we, this is kind of an untranslatable word, Selah. But in the context of Psalm 85, verse 2, Lord, you forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sins. Congregation, let us take a moment of silence to reflect on the sins that God has covered and forgiven. This is beautiful. I encourage you to read all of Psalm 85 and consider how it's kind of a template for the worship service. And, and how it could evoke you to consider reading a psalm every day and how it is uplifting your home worship life. It's quite neat. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have forgiven the iniquities of your people, the shortcomings of your people. But not only that, you cover them. You cover them so we don't see them. We don't have the smell, the stench of what they are. But you've done this forever in the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Oh, we're so thankful for this. Help us to be mindful. Take time to consider in self-examination what we have left undone that you would have us do or the things we did that you wish we shouldn't. And then help us to share this wonderful word of grace and mercy with those around us as well. We pray this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Take some time for Selah, whatever this could mean. Some time for meditation on what it is that, that we don't do that we should or that we leave undone. And then uh, use those moments to also consider how we can like, likewise forgive others around us. Thank you for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you later this week for more time in God's Word in this interactive way. Have a blessed day in the Lord.